blessing your favor upon my life. I am in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Shall we clap for Jesus? We may be seated. James chapter 3, verse 17, 17 and 18. Then Romans 4, verse 9, Proverbs 11, verse 18. As a believer, we need to understand believers' life. The way we live as believers and the way the people of this world live is not the same. What do I mean? There is a wisdom of this world and the wisdom from above. Jesus came with his father's wisdom for him to manage the knowledge of this world. What can make you to be a different person? It is not because of where you are coming from, the level of your education. Remember, even if you say you are a professor, there's another professor. Even if you say you are a doctor, there is another doctor. If you say you are a specialist, there is another specialist. It is only Jesus who is alone. And you cannot compare him to anyone here on earth. People of God, I want you to take this message seriously. For you not to miss heaven. Live according to the wisdom of God. Not according to the standard of this world. The wisdom of God will make you to know what is good and what is bad. The wisdom of God can make you to see beyond what you are going through. Because that wisdom is not through this mind. It will come through the Holy Spirit. People who are facing problems today, if they knew that there will be problem in the near future, I'm sure... Those who are sick because of, you know, misbehaving, if they knew that this would be the consequence. Let me take you to the book of James 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace, loving, considerate, Submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. That is the wisdom from where? So tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Live according to the wisdom of God. Say it again. I can't hear you. At the back, I can't hear you. Tell your neighbor, say live according to the wisdom of God. Yes. That wisdom will bring justice in your life. That wisdom will bring justice in your family. Whatever you are doing or whatever you'll be doing, the wisdom of God is your compass. No matter what, your thinking will be above the standard of this world. Even where you know you are being offended, you behave like someone who is not even offended. The knowledge of God surpasses all knowledges here on earth. No one here on earth who can claim to be more knowledgeable than a servant of God. I mean someone who is led by the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer and the Spirit of God is in you, your wisdom is greater than any wisdom here on earth. 
You understand every stage of your life. Follow me. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Meaning there is no injustice. There is no hatred. There is no envy. There is no jealous. If you see your brother is doing very fine, you'll be happy. If you see your sister going through a lot of problems, you feel like you are the one facing that problem. Because you understand life beyond human beings' appearance. So live according to the wisdom of God, meaning you allow God himself to control your life. And if you know you allow God to control your life, your life is unquestionable. Your life is unstoppable. Persecution will come. Sickness will come. Anything that will come will not bring you down. Because you live above all those things. I want you to know that if Jesus were to be in our midst today, as long as cannot allow him to control your life, you remain the same. Nothing will change. It is only the story in your mouth. Ah, he performed a miracle. Ah, he did this, he did this. That is history now. What about the benefits of Jesus appeared in your midst? Did you benefit anything? No, he performed a miracle. I witnessed one. What about you? The purpose of his presence is not to be surprised of what you know you'll be doing or what he has done. It's to bring you closer to him so that at the end of your journey here on earth, you see him. I mean, you go back to him. Praise the Lord. His wisdom is pure. Even those who are sitting on the judgment here on earth, if Jesus were to bring all of them that are to say, sit here, and start asking them one by one, this judgment that you pass, was it according to what? Ha, huh, there will be problem. There will be what? Problem. Why? Human beings are not what? Perfect. No one who is perfect here on earth. You become perfect when you allow Jesus to take over your life. You will not look at your son. If you are a, a, a senior man, a, a big man in the government, and then your son or your daughter is in the prison, are you going to allow your son to be in the prison and you are holding that position? No, you make sure that your son or your daughter is out of that prison. And yet, poor people, innocent people are just languishing there. You, because you are there, you are not pure. The wisdom of this world is not what? No. God can allow you to face the reality. If you are not listening to him, the same punishment you give to this one, he give it to you. As long as you are, you are the, I mean, you believe in him and then you become in this plane. He will let you go by your way so that you face the reality. So live according to what? I'm sure you understand that is our simple title this morning. Live according to the wisdom of God. You will never go wrong. Listen to this. It says, Then peace, loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruits, and impartial, and sincere. Verse 18. Peacemakers who sows in peace live a harvest of what? Lusciousness. We lose nothing if we remain in him and him remain in us. We are there to make sure that anywhere where you be found, there is what? Peace. A peacemaker who sows in peace, he will leap the harvest of what? Righteousness. Are you ready to harvest the righteousness at the end of your journey? It is very easy to say yes. 
but it is not easy to live according to what is written here. Because as a human being, there are so many limitations. Decision making, judgment, anything that you want to, to do as a human being. You not consider your spiritual life, you consider your feelings. You consider your status in the society. Instead of you considering your spiritual life, your personal relationship with Jesus, you not mind that relation. All you want is to show people that you are also a human being. You can do this. No. The purpose of you to be called a child of God is to be a peacemaker. Loving. Kindness. Forgiveness must be part of your life. Because you are representing your father. You cannot see Jesus walking in our midst. He walks inside our heart. It is us who will be walking physically. And through our walking, we need to show that kindness to everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to this again. Peacemakers who sows in peace Leap a harvest of what? Righteousness. If you are there as a child of God, this is the time that you need to, to reflect on your life. If you are not careful, you may continue saying you are a child of God and yet you are destroying people's lives. And the purpose of you being there as a child of God is to make sure that you represent the will of God in your lifetime here on earth. Remember what Jesus said. He said, Father, if it is your will, he never said my will. He said, let yours be done. Because he knew that he brought me to represent him. It doesn't matter who believed in me or who is against me. My role and my focus is to make sure that the will of my father is fulfilled. Even at the point of his death, he never changed to say, no, 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 no. This is too much. You, God, you are unfair. Why must you allow these criminals to insult me? They are just enjoying me. And you allow me to go through this. He accepted that platform to represent his father. For him to reconcile the whole entire world to his father. He was told that you go through this like Apostle Paul. When God called him, he said, you represent me. You will be persecuted. Your people will turn against you. But I will be there to make sure that you are protected. This is why you cannot save Jesus without backing from above. If you say you are a child of God, it's just a matter of time without Jesus in you. Just one, one scratch, you insult everyone. We are talking about wisdom. We are talking about what? Wisdom. If I slap you here, bah! are you going to say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Are you going to say that? Eh? Or maybe your friend slap you. Idiot, Wanyanta. Are you going to ah, praise the living Jesus? Are you going to say that? Ah. Ukulepona na Bible ni kumbi. No, tetele nyanta mchechi. It's an idiot. It's what? No, you are a child. Even if I am a child of God, I cannot allow this fool to step on my feet. That is Christianity of our days. But if you are living according to his wisdom, there is no amount of, you know, intimidation, frustration, insult that can make you to misbehave or to change the language. You start now speaking the language of this one. Yes, we are here on earth. The Bible says that even if we are here, we do not belong to this life. We belong there. Before you respond to any challenge, your father in heaven must tell you how to go about this one. 
how to approach this, how to answer this, unlike the way we answer. We answer people according to our feelings, not according to his wisdom. Let's go to Romans, Romans chapter 12. Let's go there. I ask you this question, that is there anyone where you know someone slapped you? Are you going to say thank you, Lord Jesus? Hmm? Listen to Romans chapter 12, verse 17. I'll just read 17, although you can start from uh, 13, but let me just speak 17 because of time. When you go home, you can start from uh, 13 up to uh, maybe 20 or 19. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If it is what? <laughs> do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of who? In the eyes of everyone, as a child of God, remember that you are a miller. You are what? A miller. This is why you see the people of this world, who, whenever you know you are trying to do, maybe you have gone wrong, they will just say, ah, what a I could change. Why? They know that people from the house of God are peacemakers. They don't fight, they don't insult. Be careful. This is what is, the Bible says here. It says, be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. It doesn't matter whether there are people that you respect or there are people that you hate. As a child of God, everyone, whether bad or good, must find a room in your heart. Because you are a peacemaker. You may not move together or work together, but inside your heart, you have got nothing against anyone. Even those who are gossiping about you, you have got nothing against them. Because the wisdom of God surpasses all the knowledge. There's no one who can say, eh, me, I'm this. This is why you see even leaders of this world, they die. You hear great men and women we have been, you know, hearing these names from childhood up to today. But you can't find them. They have gone. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is everlasting. You can trust a rich man. You can trust politicians because of money or whatever is there. Politician will come and go. But Jesus is there forever. Like the song I heard you are singing. Wisdom is beyond material. You cannot buy him with your money. Or your dance, you dance well inside the church. Father, see the way I'm dancing. You cannot attract him. Not until you accept his spirit to settle in your heart. He is the only one that you know can stand in between right and wrong. Human being can do that. This is why you see when we are discussing, no no, he said, That is human being. In front of the camera, no, uh, we we'll make sure that uh, we do this and that. Uh, at the end of the day. God in heaven is laughing, he said, these people I created. Ah, I have given them this, you know, a platform where to stand. They, they have created their own platform. Be careful to do the right thing in the eyes of everyone. As a believer, as a child of God. See the insult upon the church. The name pastor is no longer carrying any value. If there is a name that is useless now, 
it is the name pastor. You feel bad to be called what? Pastor. Satan has now, you know, using fake, fake things to demonize the name pastor. If you say, before now, if you go to the police, I'm pastor. Oh, but my people, but I'm signing. The quality of land that can for any paper. Now, when I was at the pastor, I was signing. Babu took. Then, when I was suspect. Through interrogation, I was asking that I was a baby ring. But Pastor Mubari, I don't like to share that. Just look him up. He's a suspect. I'm a man of God. No, 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 sir, you are a suspect. And not until the court, you know, prove you innocent. As it is now, you are what? Look at the situation on the ground. The wisdom of God must be above everyone. When you appear as a servant of God, the presence of God must dominate the place where you are. To control them. But the situation is not like that on the ground. Because we confess what we are not inside our heart. When Jesus, you know, appeared before the learned people, by then, the, the high priests, the teachers of the law, when they were discussing about, you perceive whatever they are saying. The other lady said, Ah! What kind of a man is this? The wisdom of God is the source of that five senses you are carrying all over to say, I'm wise, I'm wise, I'm wise. You, you, you got it from there. Just a quarter of sense. <clears throat> Carry it so that you'll be thinking because I've created you as a human being. You will be representing me. You will name this and that. It doesn't mean that you are equal with him. No. So for you to live according to his will, let his wisdom be in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says in verse 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Live at what? With every, in the wisdom of God, it is possible. In the wisdom of human beings, it is not what? This is where you call this depression. I'm depressed. And you know, I, I, I don't want to see this man because of what he has done. He abused me, he did this. I don't want to see this woman because of this. It is because of we are living according to the standard of this world, not according to the wisdom of God. Even if you know you are offended, or I'm offended, or I offend you with the wisdom of God in you, yes, what I've done to you is wrong, but you will not carry anything against me. You just see me as an ordinary what? Human being. And your life is clear. Unlike a situation whereby, uh, uh, you know, I feel like... Uh, uh, dying, I feel like there are people who are on the oxygen. Hmm? Surviving on what? Machine. You are just okay. Just gossiping about your life, you feel like dying. Do you know what you are talking about? Hmm? Just because you have been sacked from employment, I, 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 I'm depressed. Ah, why are you calling problem in your life? Instead of you learning to Jesus to say, Father, Thank you. Your wisdom has prevailed over my life. Because you knew that I will be sacked. And it is only you who knows my second word. Job. Not you know what you are saying. I redundancy is working now. With the wisdom of God, your wife and your kids, they may not even know that our father has been sacked. You walk majestically. Ah, Michael, 
The wisdom of God is at work. Not to make your family sad. Because if you bring that sadness in your family, you are delaying your next level in life. You just enter. No, anyway. You're asking God how to tell my family these things. Not the wisdom of God sees beyond what you are going through. If Jesus, you know, was not able to see the way out of that situation, I don't think so. No, no, this is too much. Live according to what? The wisdom of God. Thank you. God bless you.